All right. Today I'm here talking with Rachel Andrew, web developer, speaker, author, and co-founder of the wonderful but tiny little CMS called Perch. Welcome, Rachel. Hi. Good to be here. Thanks. Uh, really glad to have you. Can you give, I guess, a quick overview of uh, kind of your journey, your career, of where you started and how you got where you are today uh, and the steps you took? Yeah, so I've been doing this for a very, very long time, um, I guess about 20 years. So when I started on the web, there wasn't very much to learn. You could pretty much learn what you needed to do to build a website in about an afternoon. Um, and, and then you were the person who everyone knew who built websites. So that was kind of cool. So that was really how I got started, was just just playing around with the web and, and thinking this is interesting and enjoying building things. Um, so I kind of learned stuff as I went along, you know, every time I was like, oh, Here's a site that's got, you know, this magical rollover navigation. How do I do that? And so I learned a bit of JavaScript and I wanted to build a guest book. So I learned Perl because that's what you did. <laughs> um, so that was really how I got started was just doing that. And it's really just grown from there. I've always just learned things. The next thing that's come along, um, you know, this isn't my training. I've not got a computer science degree or, or anything like that. Um, I, I trained to do dance. So totally different area. Um, and yeah, that's it, it. That's really just how I've done it. I, I worked for a while in kind of dot com companies during the dot com crash. Mm -hmm. uh, decided that working for other people wasn't very stable. I was probably better just to work for myself. So I've been self employed since two thousand and one, which probably makes me unemployable at this point. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same so. thing after uh, after Sifter, but it turns out I'm I'm moderately employable, I guess. Still. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. you might surprise yourself. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been a long time. So how long has Perch been uh, kind of the main focus? And what when did that transition happen and kind of what led to it? So Perch, we actually launched eight years ago yesterday. So it's now eight years old, which is actually getting on a bit really for a bit of software. And is, uh, so yeah, so we launched it as a side project. It was something we were interested in having really for the work we were doing. We were doing CMS development for sort of fairly large scale, mainly for design agencies. They were interested in having something small and lightweight for their smaller projects. And so that's where it came from. It was this little content editor. Um, because people were interested in it and immediately started buying it, we carried on developing it. And over, I guess, about two years, um, 18 months to two years, we kind of transitioned away from doing the client work to doing Perch just because it was making enough money to do so. So it absorbed more and more of our time as it yep. brought in more of our company income, really. It was it was a sort of a slow transition between doing 100% client work and, and Perch kind of in evenings and weekends to actually that being the main focus. So when you originally built it, was the first idea immediately to let's sell this as well, or were you building it purely for yourselves for your client work? Fairly quickly, we realized it was a nice standalone thing. Everything we'd done before that had been things that we'd need to go in and install for people. We had a big mm -hmm. CMS framework that we were working with, but that involved us going and developing yeah. using it. Because uh, there wasn't really so much stuff around as there is now. There weren't the kind of frameworks and things that there are today. So we had our own sort of in-house thing. We'd go and we'd, we'd build systems on that. Uh, so when we started building Perch, they were like, oh, this is actually, this could be a standalone. We could just sell it as a thing rather than us needing to have any input in, in, in deploying it. So fairly quickly, we thought we'd probably sell it. Um, I don't think we really expected it to take off in any great way. It was just, oh, well, you know, this might be useful for a few people. Yeah, I, I feel like that's one of the best stories. The more I talk to people and find out. We said, oh, we created this thing. And then we thought, oh, well, maybe others would be interested in it. And before you mm. know it, it turns into kind of its own little beast. Mm. It just takes off on its own. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's always one of the best ways to do it, the healthiest ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. How long did it take you from the time you launched it until the time it became your full 100% focus? I say, I think probably about two years or so. It was difficult because there were, you know, there were some clients that we, kept doing things for for oh, longer yeah. because we had yeah things come to a natural end so we weren't mm -hmm. taking on new stuff but you know we had clients who we cared about and we weren't just going to abandon so yeah. it sort of all tailed off but we were probably sort of two years or so in that we could really rely on it as being a, a source of income and a main source of income right on okay so one of the other things that i also love is 
Perch is competing in a really crowded market, right? And not only <laughs> yeah. a crowded market, but a market where there's many free options. Mm -hmm. um, how has that been? Has that, uh, you know, I think a lot of people see that and go, oh, well, we'd never try to compete with WordPress or whatever it is. And obviously Perch is in a very different niche, but it's still something mm -hmm. that somebody's like, well, this is free. I'm just going to use it. Mm -hmm. um, have y'all had any experience or gained any insights uh, that would help other people who kind of are thinking similar things if they're trying to, if they've got an idea and they're really excited about it, but there's already a really competitive field in the market. Um, kind of what have y'all done to help set Perch apart? I think partly it is because there are a number of people who actually want to pay for something and want to have, to feel they've got some support there. You know, they've, they've handed over money and therefore we, they can be there sort of due some support and some help. I think that's, that's valuable to people. Um, there are people who've just had real trouble with WordPress. You know, they've they've had a site that's just they've struggled with it, or they found it difficult to implement. I mean, one of the things with Perch is that you can drop it into an existing site. So if you've got a site that's just a bunch of HTML pages, you can drop in Perch without having to rebuild the whole thing into a theme. Wow. So and that was really one of the initial use cases was this idea that a lot of people were building static sites, and then the client would turn around and say, "Oh, can I just edit the text on the home page?" And of course, that if you build that into WordPress, you are having to take the whole thing and put it into WordPress. Yeah. So we kind of went the other way around. We're like, well, do you want to add a CMS to this site that already exists? And you can do that with Perch. So we've got different, there's different things about Perch. And I think there are just a group of people who are interested in paying for things and, and kind of understand that their time is worth something. Mm -hmm. the, average, the average Percher knows that their time is, is worth money. And having something free that takes them three times as long that it's actually not free yeah and and so that's really the customers that we go for so i guess the advice is to make sure you know that there are people willing to pay mm -hmm. for whatever else what it is that you can do which is 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 better or different than than the free thing yeah you know you, you need to have something that people are willing to pay for whether that's you know knowing they've got support um or you know there's a sort of a, a community around and the, the developers are, are interested in them that might be important uh there's, there's a there's a few things but yeah i mean there's always going to be people who say well i'm going to use the free thing but they tend yeah. to be the people for whom time is not worth money mm -hmm. <laughs> you know well, and, and i think too uh, perch is a much simpler tool and it's something that you would be a lot less hesitant to hand over to a client mm. uh, yeah there's a lot less uh rope to hang themselves with compared to wordpress where the a month yeah. later, they might be okay. Now, how do I log in again? <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean that that's that's it. You know, we we try and be content editor and client friendly. That's always been important because I, I kind of feel that quite often the content editors are, are these sort of forgotten users. People think of the people viewing the website, right? And they think about themselves as a developer implementing the thing, but they forget that in the middle there is this person who has to battle with the wretched thing all day to get the content in. Um, and it kind of, they get forgotten and you end up with these things where you have to build, you know, you have to basically build a blog and then that blog is used for content on yeah. the site. And that's a mental leap that as a developer, that's fine. Oh, well, that's where all my content's stored and it goes on the site. But the client's just like, how do I edit the text on the about page? Yeah. Where's the about page? <laughs> and so that was one of the things we tried to do with Perch was to make it very friendly for, for content editors, which if you are a small design agency, if your clients are constantly ringing up saying, how do I edit text in my CMS? That's often not billable time. Yeah. You just have to help them out. Yeah. So one of the things we wanted to do with Perch was to make it simple so people weren't burning up a lot of time they could be billing, just helping people out. Yeah. So I want to touch on support in a sec, but one of the other things I want to hit on. So in addition to Perch, you're on the CSS Working Group, Google Developer Expert. You're traveling extensively, speaking, and sharing all of this knowledge. Um, so part of it is how do you juggle it? Um, obviously, a lot of that work is valuable. You're you know doing really great, interesting stuff. Um, but how do you balance the business with finding time for all of that and the travel and the interruptions. Uh, I find if I travel somewhere for a day, it completely ruins my week in terms of productivity. So has that been something that's been difficult or have you just kind of learned to, to manage it and juggle it? Does Perch help because you can work on it from anywhere? Uh, you know, can you talk about that mm -hmm. a little bit? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very good at working on the road. I'm very sort of structured in myself. I like structure. I like to, 
be sort of organized. I think that helps if you're traveling. So I try and keep my day same. You know, I might be at a conference in San Jose or, or somewhere, but I'll keep my days pretty much the same. I'll go out for a run. I'll, you know, get the emails done i'll get the work i need to do done obviously if it's a conference day i'm gonna have less time because i'm gonna be at the conference we're talking to people doing my talk but i'll try and get work done and i'll try and keep the structure i think if you travel enough you can't kind of do the whole constantly socializing out every night thing because it just kill you and i'm also 42 i'm too old for that so (laughs) so i think you know it's kind of i'll i'll arrange to meet people maybe for coffee and then think right well I'll, i'll have the evening to get on with some stuff because that's what I need to do um I'm not really a late night person anyway so Mm -hmm. um I'll try and sort of fit around the social obligations of being a conference speaker say you know you need to be there you need to talk to people um that's part of the job really um with being able to do work and I do that by being quite disciplined around around those rules that I set for myself um and I couldn't I couldn't travel for four months of the year if I wasn't disciplined I'd end up sick you know so it's it's that it's being very organized Uh, and I think that the more you do the better you get at that because if it's just a few a year it's like well it's fine to throw it all out the window if you if you go to four conferences a year you should just like enjoy it and you know eat all the rubbish food and drink the drink and go out to the parties and all that and that's great but if you do 36 like I do (laughs) or whatever that's you can't you know you can't you'd burn out so I I think it's it's knowing yourself and knowing that you have this stuff that you have to do and balancing, you know, the various things. And yeah, you get better at that the more you do. Yeah. No, I think that's, that's great advice. Something I could take to heart and uh, have a little more discipline uh, in in keeping that schedule. uh. Yeah. It's it's where, it's where that, the ballet training, which is where I came from. You see, that's where that's, that's, uh, that's good. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That definitely makes sense. Yeah. So support. Mm-hmm. Obviously, with SaaS, support is different. I want to mm-hmm. say probably simpler. Um, it's it's generally going to be more product questions, but with yeah. something self-installed and hosted, invariably the support is more complex, probably more varied. Uh, how has that been with Perch? Yeah, it's kind of hard with Perch because a lot of the support questions are nothing to do with our software. And uh, the person asking them doesn't always know where our software starts and their front end development or their web server, you know, where where yeah. those things. So we get a lot of stuff, which is uh, people who are just, you know, they're, they're, they're blaming the software or they think it's the software. And actually what they've got is a hosting problem or they've got a problem with SCSS, you know, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's got nothing to do with us. But they're just seeing it as it's something to do with the website. Uh, and also, you know, PHP is um, there are many, many ways to badly configure your server using PHP, and mm-hmm. we've seen them all. Uh, and you have people running PHP in all kinds of environments. Um, I mean, so, yeah, the support is very difficult with a self-hosted thing. and there's, You know, there's no way around it. It's going to be very technical, which makes it hard just to outsource it. You can't just say, oh, you know, here's a, a person with reasonable computer knowledge. Yeah. They'll be able to do the support. You can't do that because most of the things... Um, especially over time, you know, all the trivial stuff you code out of the software. You know, the, the trivial things people run into, you find a way to show a good error message or write some good documentation, and those things go away. And what you're left with are people who either perhaps shouldn't be using the software. You know, they, they'd be better off using, say, a Squarespace or you know, some hosted system. Uh, they haven't quite got the skills to be installing this stuff themselves, or they've got a problem with their hosting or their own development environment or or they have, you know, they've, they've caught against some weird thing, but they can't explain what it is, so we can't help them. You know, the actual stuff that we get in is quite difficult to deal with, um, which is why we still do all the support, because yeah. trying to get anybody else to do that support, they'd need to know an awful lot about an awful lot of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a very expensive support person to have them with that kind of skill set. Yes, yeah. So the upside is if, if one of your customer's sites goes down, they don't all go down. So there's there's that. No. Um, but so has there no. been specific strategies you've adopted or that you would advise for other people who are considering a self-hosted model, uh, things that, you know, whether it's partnering with a subset of hosting providers that, you know, you can count on to have things configured right or other things like that? 
Uh, I, we've, we encourage, obviously, the customers to help each other out, and they do that, um, which is which is great because they actually do have the knowledge of, of the mm-hmm. system and they have the knowledge. And so there is a bit of that goes on in the forum. People will will start to help each other out a bit. I think the main thing is to have really great documentation, lots of docs. Videos have been really important for us. Um, in fact, we've just done a whole load of new videos for Perch 3 um, because people can then look at those and step through things and learn how to do stuff uh, a lot of people i i can't understand learning from a video at all but lots of people love them so yeah. <laughs> i spend a lot of time making videos which uh, i'm completely baffled by the, the, this use case but there we go it's yeah there's um, a lot of things like that videos or in-person demos or webinars mm-hmm. everybody's so different in how they absorb yeah. the information and it's tempting to say oh well, we've got all of these wonderful detailed help docs with screenshots and arrows yeah but that doesn't work for everybody, right? So many, a lot of people would rather yeah, watch yeah. the video. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of our customers are, are web designers first. They're not developers first. And so having, I think having yeah. the videos, seeing someone actually writing the code and they can see it and then it's not, not a lot they've got to do, that's really helpful. So, yeah, I think it's if you're going to have the self-hosted thing, you've really got to have that material there and you also need to know where to draw the line with someone in support and say look this is a hosting problem you need to go to your web host we can't help you with this or you know this is a css issue you know you you need to you need here's some good resources to go and learn about css but it's not our product that you're running into a problem with here and i think it's tempting to want to help everyone and you essentially end up building their website line by line in support um, and, and that's not helpful to it. You know, that's, that's not fair on the rest of the customers. You should be improving yeah. your product, not helping that one person constantly. So I think you have to get quite strict with people and say, look, sorry, this isn't, you know, maybe someone else in the forum might be able to help you with this, but you might be better to go to a CSS forum, you know, go and yeah. go to the CSS tricks forums and, and post there, or you need to speak to your web host here because this is actually a hosting issue. Um, and, and, so while it's tempting to be incredibly helpful to everyone, as you grow, you're not going to be able to carry on doing that. Yeah. So the, the forums is an interesting topic. Is that something you all launched right away or added later as a hope that it could help alleviate some of the support? Yeah, I mean, we, because we, you know, we're a one-off cost, we don't have paid support, as it were. Mm-hmm. So people aren't paying a, a subscription to have support. So the forum, yeah, we thought if we have support open, not only does that, enable other people to help each other out um, and especially those things that are kind of implementation requests you know how do I do this or that often other customers are better at answering that because they've done it themselves um, but also it being open it means people can search it and you know, a lot of people just search the form find their answer and, and never post mm-hmm. so it's there um, so I mean there, there are there are people who ask for some sort of private support and we can provide that I mean particularly with things like shop um, we've, you know, we've got a, a full e-commerce add-on. Mm-hmm. Uh, around that, people start to actually say, you know, we'd like to pay for support because they want to know they've got someone yeah. at the other end if it all goes wrong. And that's for, you know, we can do that kind of support contract with private support if someone is after that, and we can tailor that to whatever it is that they need. I mean, that's fine. But for most people, you know, they they just want to be able to post somewhere and say, I've got this issue, and and we can help them out. Yeah. So are the forums pretty self-sustaining? Do you all have to do a lot of moderation? Are you all in there answering questions as well pretty regularly? How does, how does yeah, that work on your time? Yeah, I mean, we do most, most of the actual support because a lot of it is the stuff that tends to end up there is often quite complex. Um, mm-hmm. We find that other customers will, will pick off the simple stuff. You know, someone yeah. just saying, oh, how do I do this? And they'll, they'll spot it and be like, oh, I know that answer or I know where that is in the docs and they'll answer, which is great because, it, it, you know, the sort of easier things get, get moved out. So that that's cool, but yeah, and we do most of the support really. Does it? Because I know uh, I had always thought about doing something like that with uh, with Sifter. Obviously, it doesn't need that kind of technical. Um, but do you find my fear was moderation, so whether spam mm. or things like that? Has that been a problem, or is that just largely a technically solved thing, and it's not something y'all have to deal with a lot? Yeah, well, we've not had a problem with spam until recently, and we've had a sort of ongoing sort of bizarre situation with hand entered spam and it's the hand you know you can deal with the stuff which is just being thrown at your server sort of, and because it's a, a custom build the forum we don't tend to get a lot of that just you know scripts oh, okay. just throwing yeah. stuff and people have to have an account so they've got to have signed up for an account to post so there's quite yeah. a lot of roadblocks but if someone is hand entering spam yeah they're going to create an account they're going to hand enter spam you know there's very little you can do about that in yeah. any 
any scenarios. So that's been a bit difficult. But other than that, we have the ability to ban people. But because they're all customers, we tend not to have too much trouble. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, if someone is unpleasant, we will cheerfully ban them because I'm, you know, don't want people making, yep. you know, making the place unpleasant. But but generally, that's not something we have to do. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it, that's that's not really an issue. So. Well, and it sounds like the other upside benefit of all this is that it's kind of uh, uh, almost an organic way of building help documentation so that it's going to show mm. up in Google. Somebody has a problem, they search for it. Yeah. And yeah. So that's, it yeah. that seems like that's handy as well. Yeah. Um, so now we're going to kind of, I want to get into a little more of the, the downsides of running the business and some of the things that I think a, a lot of us will, everybody, we all, you know, you get started and you glamorize. It's going to be so great. I have my own business. It's going to be so perfect. Um, but I think we all know it's not like that. So the first question is what's the toughest day or event? I mean, it doesn't have to be a specific day that y'all have encountered with the business, the, the day where you're like, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? There's gotta be a better way. Uh, you know, can you talk a little bit about what that might have been and how y'all kind of dug yourselves out? I think the the worst thing was we've only once um, had a in in all of our eight years we've had one um, security issue that resulted in people being able to compromise sites and it was in a, it was actually in a, a plugin. Um, that is the only time we have ever had any security problems with Perch, which is a pretty good track record. Mm -hmm. uh, but because of that, um, I think, and it was, as I say, it was in a plugin. It was, we, we immediately, you know, that day released a patch for every single version, you know, every single dot release of Perch that had ever been, we released this patch for so that people didn't have to upgrade their entire system. They could mm -hmm. just fix that file. Um, and we did that that day. And generally the customers were brilliant about it. Um, it you know, it wasn't, it really wasn't that big a deal, you know, when you, cause people are quite used to the fact that WordPress is constantly having these security yeah. updates, but to us, it was like heartbreaking that something yeah. had got through, you know, um, because, because we've had, we had, you know, we had this fantastic track record, um, and, and, you know, we really care about this stuff and, and worry about security and making sure that people's stuff is safe, you know, even though most of it is actually public with, with something, cause this is pre as having the shop and things. So, you know, really, most of the content is is public content anyway. Uh, it's not so. It, what it it was just, yeah. That that was the worst thing because we don't want to let our customers down. Um, well, and, and that's not the type of work that's fun and energizing. It's kind of more no. monotonous and tedious and really kind of wears you out. And so was that yeah. was a site compromised? Is that how y'all find out about it, or multiple sites compromised? Yes, because some yeah, someone yeah, someone um, uncovered it, I guess, and. I mean, luckily, the one thing about being a smaller solution, yeah. you know, if if a, if there's a problem with WordPress, then you're going to have, yeah, you know, tens of thousands of sites potentially yeah. very quickly. Whereas with something like Perch, although we've got, you know, there's several thousand Perch sites out there, but that's a quite a small number. It's not interesting to people trying to hack. So it took a long time before this was spotted. I think it was probably spotted because it was actually in a in a plugin rather than even in which is more widely used. Mm -hmm. So, um. Yeah, so a, a site was it was used to to compromise a site, which then obviously that was spotted. And normally, you know, when people come to us and say, "Oh, this site's been hacked," pretty much every time I investigated, it was through their control panel software or through an old WordPress install they had lying around on the server, and we'd never found anything that was us. So at first, we were like, "Oh, this probably isn't us," mm -hmm. um, and then we're like, "No, this this looks like this is us and then immediately you know released patches and emailed everybody uh, you know everyone who'd ever had a perch license ever we emailed straight away and said here are the patches and really most of the feedback we got was really positive people were just like oh you dealt with this really well thank you for giving us the file for our installs we didn't have to install yeah. you know update old sites um and and so i think in terms of the business it was fine but yeah we it was a horrible day and and yeah, we were just really upset about it, really. Yeah. So how has growth been over the years? It's been pretty slow and steady. And then has there been any kind of points where, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's different than SaaS, so it's not recurring. Um, but have there mm. been points where you kind of hit a plateau in growth and you're like, man, if we could only grow a little bit more, we could go full time or we could invest a little more time in this or whatever it is. Um, so I guess talk a little bit about the growth and the, the patterns and plateaus and... 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably really where we are now is that we, we're we kind of not quite to a point we could hire somebody else full time. Very nice to be able to do that. Um, but the sort of level of person that if we'd hire another developer here at the point we are, you know, there's an, you know, Perch is its own thing mm-hmm. and there's an awful lot of it. There's an awful lot of software at this point. Um, and to sort of it's not junior developer kind of territory. Yeah. So you're talking to someone quite expensive to you know, to be able to to hire and, and to work on, on Perch. Um, so I think that's really a point we're at now is that we feel like, yeah, you know, if we could just get it over a certain point, we could. there's all these things we'd like to do and, and it would be really good to be able to do that. So I think, yeah, that's, that's sort of a point that we feel that we're a bit at. And it's hard to get past that because it's quite a big jump to go from two people mm-hmm. to three people, essentially. Um, and, and how that works with a business, which is essentially you know, a married couple. That's an, that's kind of an interesting dynamic to then bring yeah. somebody else into. Um, Absolutely. So there's all sorts of things. We've tried contracting stuff out. We do, I mean, we contract out design a lot because neither of us are designers. Uh, so there's all sorts of things that other people do. We've had terrible struggles trying to outsource development work. Yeah. Typically we end up with it back here and it having to be fixed in-house, uh, front and back end. Uh, actually finding people with the skill to work with just the code itself and who don't want to bring in every single framework they've ever heard of is incredibly <laughs> hard these days. Yeah. Um, and of course, when you're working with something like Perch, you know, it, it, it's its own framework. So you can't just say, oh, I'm going to, and you can't just, because people are installing it on their own hosting, you can't pull in, they, they often don't have access to things like Composer, for example. So we can't just pull in everything. They're using old versions of PHP. So a load of these libraries that people want to use don't work anyway even if they did pull them in you know yeah. so it's you know it has to work on php on windows because we've always supported that so there's an awful lot you need to know and it's very hard to find those people especially on a kind of contract level yeah yeah absolutely it's somebody who's got to be in and in deep and in deep for a long time yeah and that's it and if you if you put that kind of work out to contracts as well you you lose that investment in the person as well you know the minute they yeah. You know, whereas if you've got someone who's actually an employee, well, it's worth spending time with them, showing them how this stuff works. Um, and yeah, you know, I mean, like all the things that we just know about making PHP work on all these systems. Um, normally, a PHP developer dictates the system their stuff goes onto, and so they don't run into this stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. So the next set is what are some of the reoccurring challenges that you've faced and whether you solved them or not solved them, uh, kind of how did you solve them or how did you try to solve them that hasn't worked uh, and some of those? I think the occurring stuff is, is often around support, often around um, writing good documentation. Uh, you know, every time we kind of relaunch the docs, we refresh the docs, there will be a group of people who hate it. There will be a group of people who love it because the thing with documentation is, yeah, as we said before, you know, everyone wants something different. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, getting that right is really hard and that comes around constantly. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a good technical writer. I, I do technical writing as, yeah. as something that I do. You know, I, I write articles and books and and so I know I can write clear stuff. And yet still, you know, the people are like, oh, we don't understand this. And you kind of like, how, how do we make this accessible to the beginner, which a lot yeah. of them are, you know, in terms of development. They've never installed a CMS before, but also showing the capability of it all to someone who's really experienced you know we've just shipped headless cms capabilities you know we've got a sort of full api and yet it's easy to kind of dumb that stuff down while you're trying to make it easy for another group to use really really hard with something like perch um i think those are my biggest challenges is you know how to do that and how to market the thing you know we're not we're not natural marketers and you know how do you market something and how do you market something that's so diverse in the things it can do and the sort of stuff you can do with it particularly runway which is our sort of developer friendly version of perch which has things like the headless cms capability in it um, we've not done a great job at marketing that because we're much better at the really little cms stuff and that's where that's where we came from um yeah so it that's really hard are there specific marketing things that you've tried that haven't worked or that you've seen a little bit of lift from but uh, I, I know, so for instance, with, with Sifter, I tried and dabbled in a lot of different things mm-hmm. and I would have moderate success in something and think, all right, well, there's potential here. But then I would know that the amount of time and effort 
to really truly tap into that potential and that marketing mm-hmm. channel was just not scalable or it was such a massive yeah. investment, it would be a huge distraction from continuing to work on the product. And it was easy to say, eh, maybe another day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it. The, the paid sort of advertising and stuff doesn't tend to work that well. Um, what works best really is if one of us can actually talk to people about the software yeah. and show, I mean, that ultimately is the best way to do it but that's not very scalable yeah. and but then you know we're, we're not trying to take over the world with our software and yeah. <laughs> you know i think the the techniques that if, if you've got if you've got a SaaS product for instance it really is about getting as many people as possible to use it that's mm-hmm. that's the model you, know, you get people to use it they'll hopefully carry on subscribing they'll hang around you know um with us actually it's the person who wants to buy 20 30 40 100 licenses that's that's our recurring model is that they're putting it on all of yeah. their sites okay so there's a lot more for us it's it's we'd rather find those customers it's the customers who are going to buy multiple licenses um because actually people buying one perch license and then sitting in support for three weeks chatting to us as they build their site and then never building another site with perch again they're not yeah. a profitable person yeah but if they then buy a hundred more licenses because they're constantly churning out client sites. Yeah. Well, that's great, you know. Yeah. So a lot of I think a lot of the things we've tried to do is to find where are those people, you know, where are the people churning out lots and lots of little marketing sites, um, yeah. particularly for Perch because it's it's ideal for that sort of sort of role. Um, and so yeah, I mean that I think marketing it's it's if you've not got a SaaS, it, it's more about you know really targeting the type of customers that you want and finding places to find them and then yeah i think talking to them if you can um especially if it's your product because you're always going to be more enthusiastic about the problems it can solve than anybody else's yeah absolutely so if you could go back to the very beginning of all of this and give yourself a heads up about something whether it's something to be ready for or something to say you know what you're going to waste months on this and it's not important um, or, you know, you should really invest the time to learn this skill or that skill. What would it be? What would, what would your advice to yourself be? I think looking back, I would probably have continued doing the consultancy for longer and perhaps got to a point where we'd employed someone back to, you know, two years after the launch of Perch. I think we, we kind of, as soon as it was sort of equaled the money that we were getting from consultancy we're like oh we don't need to do consultancy anymore because it's making the same amount of money and I think that made it very difficult to get past it being just two of us I think had we perhaps waited a little bit longer um, it would have made that transition easier Um, I don't think we had much of a because we hadn't got a plan really for Perch it was just oh this this is working this is good Um, (laughs) you know I think that and that was really nice for a few years because we weren't that worried about oh it's just us two and we'll just carry on doing this but I think it would have been easier to make that leap up to make that step up if we'd had more income coming from other sources at the time and I think that I think I would probably say to people don't be so keen to jump into this being the only thing that you do and I think that's a really common thing because that's yeah. it's almost like the first goal isn't it yeah. is to <laughs> I only work on this product that's that's the goal and that, yeah. that's so many people's first goal it, they don't it, think past that. It's really, we didn't think past that, really. It's really funny. I mean, I, that was always my goal when I wasn't full time. Mm. And, you know, it's it's so true that we're in such a hurry to say, oh, I'm just exhausted. And a lot of it is. It's You're genuinely exhausted by consulting oh, yeah. and you want to mix it up because, you know, it's a struggle. It's a constant struggle to win clients and, and follow up for payment and all the, the general logistics to it. And it's kind of nice mm-hmm. to be like, oh, well, I won't have to do that anymore. That'll be wonderful. I'll just charge people's credit yeah. cards. Um, yeah. And and, and, and and yeah, and we had all this support as well that we were doing and then having to do the client work and yeah. work on the product. So, you know, we, we were kind of pulled all over the place. But I think we probably, you know, we could have done that. We could have carried on, you know, maybe doing two days a week doing client work or whatever. And I think. Yeah, I would just say to people, just be careful of that desire to leap into it. You know, just check what the plan is. What's the next step after that? Yeah, I think the a simpler way, a simple way to put it might be just endure the pain a little longer than you really want to. Yeah, yeah, I you think know, so. And and it'll have some some far-reaching benefits. Yeah, it's certainly worth. Yeah, just thinking. Well, what's next? What is before you make that leap? What's the next thing you're going to do? And 
will this step help you get to the next one? You know, it, it, doing this at this point, is that the right yeah. thing to do? But yeah. It's... So the last question, and it, we may have kind of already touched on it, is if you were starting a business again today, would you still do the same thing and do it all over again? Would you do something else? Um, and why? Um, I think it would be harder to launch something like Perch now. Um, I think there was there was certainly more in the market that I mean, at the time really there was Expression Engine was around, which was a sort of self hosted, paid yeah. for thing. That was really the only thing that there was, and it was very different to what Perch was. Mm-hmm. I think it the market is a bit more crowded now for the sort of paid for PHP CMS, mm-hmm. and I think that the what people want out of a content management system is changing. I mean, that's why we've done things like headless because that's uh, yeah. something that people are interested in. We you know we try and see what the next thing is and, and provide that for people and stay up to date. Um, I think the market's changing. I, if I was starting over today, I don't think I would do something that had such a huge support burden. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also eight years older than when I started Perch, so maybe that's... <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, the, there is that. You know, we do have this huge support burden. I mean, we don't have the server issues of we need to keep the, all these servers up and running because we don't host anyone's sites. So that's a different issue that mm-hmm. you might have um, if you if you go down, down like a SaaS route yeah. or whatever. Um, but, yeah, I think I would... I think we thought we were building software for people like us when we launched it and that people like us... You know, we only come into support when we absolutely have to. Yeah. Uh, and we, we phrase a very polite support request saying, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry. This is probably something wrong I've done. And here's my reduced test case. <laughs> and I what we didn't expect was people to be asking us their CSS questions. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, and, and the fact that there is this huge range of understanding of what it is to build a website and where people are on that spectrum is. And, and that, I think, is a huge a huge support burden, as I say, and I don't think I would sort of uh, willingly head off down exactly the same route again without some sort of plan as to who was going to support these people. I wouldn't expect it to be me. Um, <laughs> you know, that I think, you know, that, and that's something we've learned that, yeah, it is, it is reasonably tough to support this sort of thing. Right on. So, yeah, that's, that's all the questions I have. Is there any kind of parting advice you would give to uh, anybody who uh, is looking at either the installed model or just running a small software business or, um, or anything like that that you think uh, somebody else could benefit from coming up? Um, I, I think stick to the things that, you know, make your sort of idea unique. I mean, one of the things with Perch is that that, the first idea we had was this idea of a drop-in content editor for static sites. You know, you could drop the content tags in, reload the page, start editing content in the admin. And that use case is still there today. You know, people still use Perch like that. In fact, an awful yeah. lot of people still use Perch like that. And that actually has always been our most successful thing. You know, we've got this e-commerce add-on. We've got the sort of the, the sort of big sister of Perch runway. We've got all this other functionality. And yet, possibly still our key thing is this very, very simple idea. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be as successful without the other things to support it because actually what happens is people then, oh, I need to blog, I need to do this, I need Mm -hmm. to do that. But that kind of core idea, I think it's really important to just think, what are those core ideas? They let you start small to start with because you can just start with that little idea and ship that, see if that actually is what people are interested in. But they also keep you focused. You know, we, we protect that use case if we start thinking, oh, we could do this, and like, but no, but that would, that would mess up this thing mm-hmm. that people do. Um, so that's probably, and I think that helps to keep you, to keep you sort of lean and keep you focused on the thing you're doing, because to move away from that would be actually a huge change yeah. for what we do. Um, and so, yeah, and I think as well, and to think what your future looks like with your product, um, a bit further down the line than just, oh, it might pay the bills, you know. Yeah. You know, as I said, just just having a look. Well, what's are you thinking of building something to sell? Because that creates a whole bunch of stuff you need to think about Mm -hmm. from early days. Um, You know, or or do you, are you intend just to carry on working on this or, you know, do what, what's the end goal? What would you do if you decided you didn't want to do it anymore? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what would that look like? Um, I think it's worth having these things in mind because if it takes off, then you've got it and (laughs) you've got to decide how, and and you're going to have customers Mm -hmm. who you really care about that you wouldn't, you know, you you don't want to let down. So I think, there's a whole bunch of things to think about further than just 
oh, I might make a bit of money out of this thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think there's an incredible amount of wisdom in that advice. Uh, it's funny because I, in early, early conversations with people before Sifter, you know, people would inevitably ask, oh, what's your exit strategy? I'm like, I don't have an exit strategy. I'm going to do this forever. Mm -hmm. And then sure enough, what happened? Yeah. You know, all of my leg issues and all of that. And I just didn't have anything left in the tank and I needed an exit strategy. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, with well, that, SAS, yeah, that's it, it was easier. Yeah. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, now for y'all, you'd have to have somebody to support it and, you know, be able to get familiar with the technology and there's no way they can provide the level of support that y'all have been providing. Um, so there's yeah, challenges I mean, there. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I mean, you know, we, we love doing it. We, we really, uh, for all the sort of downside, just saying like purchase, all sorts of very cool things and seeing, yeah. you know, every day the sites people launch on it is, is brilliant. And we love that, you know, yeah, and, and, that's uh, gotta feel good. Yeah. You know, we're, 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 we've made a thing that lets other people make things and that's pretty cool in yeah. itself so you know I, I don't think we should change it i mean i think there are things that we could have done differently which might have made our lives right. easier yeah but you you learn that as you go along um yeah. and everyone does because every business is different you, you can't launch and have everything be perfect and all figured out that's never <laughs> no. gonna happen oh because you've never done it before yeah. and even if we launched another pro a product it would be different to this one and there'd yeah. be a whole bunch of things we'd be like oh you know we didn't think of that you know yeah absolutely so, yeah, I mean that's and that's kind of part of the fun of doing this. Really, is, yeah. is solving all these things as they come up. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I've got. This has been really great. Um, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it for fitting it in the schedule. I know how hectic things are for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's it's good fun. It's always fun to talk about you know the the sort of behind the scenes of having these products. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it'll be really useful for people too. So. All right. Cool. Good deal. Thanks so much. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Yeah.